Welcome to My Life. I'm John Ochins, and today we're talking to Jerry Ingalls. Back at the Addison Senior Center, and this time we are talking to Jerry Ingalls. Thank you for joining us, Jerry. We, we appreciate you taking the time because I know they've got some holiday festivities going on out there, and you're anxious to have lunch, I'm sure. But uh, Jerry, tell us a little bit about uh, where, where are you from originally? I went to school in Port Yarn uh, and graduated from Port Yarn. Okay, now did, my, my, what did your folks do up there? Uh, my dad was a factory worker. He worked at Port Yarn Sulfite. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my mother was a housekeeper and she kept house and took care of. Did you have any um, brothers or sisters? Uh, two brothers and a sister. Okay. And so you spent your whole childhood in Port Huron, and you graduated from high school there. Is that right? Uh, true, but I, um, while my uncle was in World War II, mm -hmm. we, my sister and I spent a lot of time in Carlsville, and that uh, that got my. Uh, Feet in the cow manure, and I. <laughs> <laughs> so they had a farm over there, is that right? Oh yes, yes. So you uh, helped out uh, your your uncle's uh, wife while he was in the service. Uh, grandmother, my your grand. Okay. Uh, uh, she was a widow, or for several years mm -hmm. before that. Okay. Now, did your grandparents come here from another country, or had they lived in the United States for their whole lives? Uh, Grandpa. Ingalls, as far as I know, uh, there isn't much of a history, and I never really took the interest in looking Didn't it up. Didn't look it up, eh? But uh, he was, he was from uh, uh, Argyll, and uh, that's that's up in the thumb. That's just short of Ubley. Okay, so he was born in Michigan then. So your family uh, goes back a ways here. Yeah, and then uh, then they moved to uh, Port Sanlac, and then from Port Sanlac to Port Yarn. I see. Tell us a little bit about what's, what was your grade school like in Port Huron? Was it a regular school or was it a one-room school or how would you describe it? It, it was a compost school uh, and you can, it, right now it's a Girl Scout building. Really? In, in Port Huron and it was just, a, oh, probably two blocks from the house. And I don't remember ever taking a bus at that time. So you time. could walk to school. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Did you go home for lunch too? Uh, I don't remember that. I'm sure we did. <laughs> uh, but uh, then, uh, then we went into junior high school. That was a that was a consolidated school, and then we went to the Port Huron High School. Okay. And I was a first class to graduate out of the new high school. Out on 24th Street. Oh, you were. Yeah, 1957. Oh. My sister was the last class to graduate out of the old high school. All right. Were you in the band or anything, or, oh, or playing no, sports? No, no. I, anytime I could be around cows, that's where I was. You spent a lot of time working, <laughs> working the fields, working on the farm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about. How, what direction your life took when you graduated from high school? Well, I joined the service right off in 1957. Okay. I was still in high school, and uh, uh, my mother convinced the recruiter that I should finish high school before I joined, mm -hmm. so she wouldn't sign for me, so I, I ended up in uh, uh, Army Reserves. Army Reserves? Uh, yeah. Okay. And, then, and then I was in the Army Reserves. Uh, uh, as soon as I graduated, I went in for six months active duty training. And then uh, I came home and right. m met my wife. And <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. How did you meet your wife? <laughs> we was getting ready to go to summer camp. She thought I was BSing her. And, uh, and I said, well, uh, I got a uh, buddy that's going to get married the Saturday I come back. Will you go to the wedding with me? And she said, yeah. In the meantime, she's telling me she's from Port Yarn. But she isn't from Port Yarn. She's from Pat. So anyway, uh, I wrote her a letter while I was in uh, Fort Story, Virginia, 
yeah, about that I'd be home and I'd be ready to pick her up and all to that. go to the wedding. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, of course, when you do anything with the army, you're always two hours late. <laughs> and here I come up there with my uh, army uniform on, my fatigues, not my traveling uniform, because we tra uh, traveled as a company. Sure. And uh, anyway, here she is, all dressed up. Here I am, my army uniform. And that's how. That's it's how. It's not we, exactly uh, getting uh, off on the right foot, <laughs> is it? Yeah. 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 So I took her back to uh, my folks' house and and. Uh, she introduced her to my mother and then waited while I cleaned up and changed clothes. And, she was very patient. And, uh, yeah, but that she, was your first date then. Well, did you make it to the wedding? Or Oh, yes. You did? Uh, yes. Uh, we didn't, just the reception. Uh, the wedding was already passed. Uh, I understand. <laughs> what year were you married? 1960. Ah, uh, okay. And you've had how many children? Four. Four children. And four boys, you told me, right? Yeah. Okay, now tell me a little bit about your career. Did you stay in farming? No. Uh, we, we always had animals after we moved down here. Uh, but the, I hired into Pontiac Motors. It's the first real job that I had. Yes. And when, when we could make ends meet at the end of Friday, uh, then, uh, then we, we bought this. I got a chance to be on machine repair. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I was an OJT on job trainee, and uh, we moved down here shortly after we, I got that job. Mm -hmm. Where were you living Peck. when you started uh, working at General Motors? Peck, Peck, Michigan. Peck, what's that close to? Uh, <clears throat> just south of uh, Sandusky, about 12 miles south. So you had a bit of a drive into town <clears throat> to work at the plant then, didn't oh, you? Oh, yes. And when uh, it was 60 miles from the uh, uh, parking lot in Brown City where we, where we met, and that's about 12 miles away, mm -hmm. to the parking lot for uh, Pontiac Motors. Now, what year did you move out here? In, in 1965. 1965. And do you have animals out here or anything? Oh, oh yes. You do? Uh, what do you have? I, I have them any now. We, uh, we got past that stage of our life when I retired. But when your kids were growing mm -hmm. up, you yeah, had animals? Right, what kind right. of animals did you have? Oh, we had pigs and cattle and uh, dogs. And I mean, uh, uh, the one boy raised uh, uh, beagles for, for hunting. Oh. And uh, we did a lot of hunting at that time in the area. The area was uh, completely different than what it is today. Mm -hmm. People didn't care if you crossed the fence. I understand. If you was ended up a mile and a half, two miles away, you just went up and knocked on the door and asked if you could use the phone. And the wife would come and pick me up, or part of the time they'd just say, uh, get, in the, get in the truck, I'll take you home. I want to talk to you about your four boys, but we need to take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. I'm here for you. Oh, no. Please, please, please. I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast.
back here with Jerry Ingalls. Now, Jerry, you have four boys. Would you tell us a little bit about them, please, and what they're doing right now? Well, the oldest boy is driving over the road. He's driving oversized loads uh, uh, and uh, all kinds of machinery. And at one time, he was a pro archer. He was a, uh, he went to Vegas and all the big towns and whatever. Does he live around here? Uh, he, right now his address is with us. He was living in Tennessee and uh, he wound up with a divorce. Oh. And then he got driving over the road and so not So he's right living now. in a truck probably more than he is yeah. in a house. Huh? Yeah, yeah. about uh, if, he, if, if he pulls the truck into the yard, sometimes he sleeps in the truck. Yeah. Because he's got everything there. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, what about uh, your next son? Uh, then Dennis, and uh, he he had uh, some serious serious health problems, and but he drives gravel train. He owns his own gravel train, oh. and uh, he lives out at Hadley, and Absolutely. and uh, he. He's been doing real well. His wife works at Chrysler's and drives all back and forth every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're, they have three kids. And uh, So you have some grandchildren. That's good. And greats. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, it's going to be a happy Christmas at your house. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, and then uh, I miss Ken. Ken is the second one. And, and Ken... Uh, Ken has his own uh, tree service. He worked for Roger for a year, and then uh, he he uh, he cuts trees. And Is Ken around them. here? Uh, Lapeer. Lapeer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We got three so far, right? <laughs> yeah. And then Roger. Roger was an excavator, and uh, he he had uh, well, I don't know as high as 25, 30 people working for him at one time. A big and company. then uh, and then the bottom dropped yeah, out. Yeah. If you're familiar with uh, uh, Lakeville Road, when uh, there was a them big pipes uh, alongside the road and they were marked Ingalls. And and uh, that's what he put in up towards the high school and stuff like that. He I was see. A, he, he done good size uh, business. Mm -hmm. Now you worked for General Motors until you retired, is that right? Uh, right. Okay. Right. Okay, very good. Uh, we've got a series of questions that we ask everybody. Are you ready for this? Oh, boy. Definitely. Okay. All right. Did you study before we sat you down? No, here we <laughs> yeah. go. All right. How did your parents raise you in comparison to the way that kids are raised today? Well, we never had a television until uh, I was a teenager before we ever had a television. Yeah, because and, it would have been the uh, early and, uh, 1950s. We had it? we had chores that we done outside, and even though we were uh, in Port Orange, we had chickens and rabbits and so on and so forth. We had responsibilities. You did it outside, and I don't think uh, anymore they, they have that. I mean, it's like our boys; they work for farmers. They work mm -hmm. for Hickmans. Uh, and, uh, when you were a kid and you had to help out on the farm, did you? I bet you spent some summers on the farm, right? Oh, every summer, every summer. I I can't remember how. Well, it was during World War II. Right. And uh, it, I was born in '39, so I wasn't very old. Mm -hmm. But uh, when my uncle come came home, well, then then I got a chance to drive a real tractor and stuff like that. And I, right. Uh, I mean, I that's where I was every summer. Do you think kids are raised any differently today? Well, there's there's so many things that have changed. For right now, if a kid crosses the fence, uh, he's hollered at, or the police officers called, or whatever. Uh, my kids and I never had that problem. I People mean, were more trusting back then. Well, I mean, if uh, if you crossed the fence and the guy came out and said something, you shook his hand or whatever, and uh, he, once he knew who it was, that was the end of it. Sure. I mean, uh, but uh, the kids can't do that. They talk about the way the hunters are down. The hunters are down because the, the kids haven't got no place to hunt. Mm. What, what We've got 15 acres out there, and... <laughs> when our kids uh, grew up, if, when they had a hunting license and was legal to hunt, 
uh, they 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 went out. They they had motorcycles, and they'd drive back and forth to Hickman's Fort and and uh, so on and so forth. And and they had responsibilities. Mm -hmm. We we never gave our kids an allowance. They earned right. their own spending money, mm -hmm. and that, that's the way. When uh, before they was old enough to work, they raised animals, and that was when the animal was uh, sold. That money went into their account, and they was dished out as much as they. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm, I'm uh, really satisfied with the way life worked for us. So. Good. Do you think a woman's role has changed a lot in your lifetime? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I didn't want my wife to work, period. And she didn't, uh, other than taking care of five of us my four boys mm -hmm. and me. <laughs> and probably yeah. back then, you didn't have yeah. a lot of women working in the plant, did you? Yeah. Oh, there, back there, then. Was, uh, there was uh, a lot of the women came from prior to the World War II. Mm -hmm. The Rosie see, Rivers? See, uh, uh, yes. Uh, see, uh, Pontiac Motors uh, made guns. They made the 50 caliber machine gun and uh, all kinds of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of women that worked in uh, the that plant. Had something to do with that. Yeah. And, and uh, when the GIs start coming back and, and going to work, well, then that kind of crowded them out, mm -hmm. or there was less females uh, hired. Do you think technology has changed things a lot in your lifetime? Oh, definitely. Uh, we used to machine uh, all the gears for a, a, a rear end in our plant. Now they're pressed. They pour some powder in there, press now, and uh, it, it would probably take uh, two or three hours for a, for a side gear to go through the machining process and be ready to go to heat treat. Now, now these, uh, they might lap them in or something. I don't know what they do with them because I never was involved in that part. But uh, I mean, uh, the rods for them side gears would come in when they down, uh, take them down there with a, uh, a crane, overhead crane, and uh, be a bundle this big around, and they'd load them on the rack, and and that was uh, they were cut into side gears. Yeah. I mean. It, the technology is, uh, and they work better, and they're quieter. So apparently, uh, they're doing the it's right working thing. Out. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're sitting here talking about uh, working uh, for General Motors in the plant, and uh, the role of women, and how that's changed through the years. And it just occurred to me that just today we heard on the news that. A woman has been made the CEO of General Motors, the first woman ever, a 51-year-old lady from Waterford, Michigan, actually. But anyway, we've got more to talk about, and we'll be right back. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. Once you've got your GED diploma, you'll feel so good about yourself. You come. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? He needs something a little more... Persuasive? Whatever motivation you need, we've got a pep talk for you. Get your GED pep talk and find free classes at yourged.org. Okay, now, here's a question really out of left field. How has food changed during your lifetime? And what's your <laughs> favorite food? Uh, uh, goulash was one of our main courses, and it's still a favorite food with uh, all of the boys and myself. And uh, when we first got married, uh, she 
made a pot of goulash. She had 10 sisters and brothers, or 10 in her family. And uh, when I keep saying that we had uh, goulash for two weeks. <laughs> now, I'm familiar with two kinds of goulash. There's the kind on mashed potatoes, and there's the kind on noodles. What kind do you like? Noodles. Noodles, noodles is what ah. we have said. Very yeah. good. Yeah, what would, the, what would be the one with mashed potatoes? Uh, the same thing, except you put the stuff on the mashed potatoes instead of on the noodles, the meat, oh, you know, the sauce. Okay. Yeah, gosh, my mouth is watering as we speak. Okay. <laughs> if you had to live your life over again, would there be anything you would do differently? Oh, quite a few things, but, uh, you know, I mean... Uh, Think of one. Uh, refrain from alcohol. Okay, okay. Was there, when you were in high school, was there a lot of drinking going on? Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty much, but not, uh, not in the school. I mean, it was all like after hours. Well, that's what and, I mean. And, and, yeah, and uh, you graduated probably, in 57, you said? Right. Well, was there much in the way of drugs back then? None. None. Never heard tell of, uh, we, we did hear about marijuana a little bit, but the, I never witnessed anybody using it or any of that sort. And I was with the type of people that would have I used tobacco for, from. But almost everybody smoked back then. Uh, you know, that, I would have to have to think yeah, that. Yeah. <coughs> um, what did you like to do for fun when you were growing up, when you weren't working on the farm? <laughs> Hunting. Hunting? That, that was my main deal. My brother did a lot of basketball, but I never was into yeah. What into did you like to hunt? Well, uh, we hunted rabbits mostly. Rabbits? Did you ever? Uh, the pheasant season was, was the main thing, but it was only two weeks long, and rabbit uh, season was uh, near three months. Did you ever go deer hunting up north? Uh, we started having deer in this part of the uh, country, uh, along about then, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, I just I hunted here. I mean, I, when uh, I, we went up different times just for the mm -hmm. weekend or whatever, but um, I went out west uh, uh, antelope hunting with a with a bow and uh, and gun both. And, when you were young, and, you did uh, that. Well, after what uh, probably. 85, something like that, mm -hmm. 1985. Have you done much traveling? Uh, we took a couple of trips. We're not really into it. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you got a lot going on around here, too, with yeah. the kids and everything. Yeah. Um, all right, test your memory banks. What was the first movie you ever saw in a theater? <laughs> Probably Mom Pa Kettle. Really? Yeah. That uh, was that, good. That's the ones that I, I remember. I mean, there would be... There might have been other ones, I mean, because they had uh, uh, a lot of westerns and that kind of stuff. And, but I mean, it was it, it, this we went as a family. My, okay. uh, my dad, mother, and. Uh, Did sister. you have a favorite movie? I don't think so. I no. Mean, I, Nothing I, comes I, to mind. Uh, Not Gone with the Wind uh, or. Uh, no, uh, I mean. No, I, I, I don't really watch a lot of okay. movies. And, uh, Do you have a favorite song? 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 Mm -hmm. Boy, I, I guess probably not. I, I like the old time uh, songs and I, uh, I like uh, the 50s music. Do you on, the doo-wop stuff? And uh, yeah, but mostly country western. Mm -hmm. Did you go to a lot of dances when you were young? Oh, that was our that was our main uh, get together. That's where was boys it? met girls and so on and so forth. Uh, they'd have uh, local dance halls, uh, and uh, you know they two or three of them on Saturday night, and, and uh, maybe you'd hit hit them all. It could cost you like fifty cents to get in or something. Yeah, that was a good deal, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. No, well, when you're working for fifty cents an hour, I guess. You know, that's quite a lot, too. How much did you pay for gasoline when you were young? Can you remember? 
About 30 cents a gallon, but when we moved down here, it was a lot cheaper. Was it? Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of times it was less than 20 cents. It was great when you could fill up a car for a couple of bucks, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but you had to do a lot for the couple of bucks. That's true. That's true. That's true. I, I think if you actually took the wages that they're paying now and the wages that they paid then, there wouldn't be a great percentage difference. Yeah. I mean, when when you're making uh, eighty dollars a week, and, and it costs uh, five dollars to fill up your car, mm -hmm. and what they're talking now, they want it all equals <laughs> out, doesn't it? Now, you grew up in the Port Huron area. Did you have? Obviously, you probably had electricity and indoor plumbing. Uh, after the war. <clears throat> After the uh, World War II, uh, they took the rationing off, and my folks built a new house on their property, and that was the first inside plumbing we had. Really? So. Yeah, uh, and probably when you worked on the farm, you did you have oh, outdoor yeah. plumbing? We never there? had. We, uh, we never had. Uh, we had hot water in the milk house to wash the milking equipment. And we carried hot water up to the house to wash up. <laughs> you believe that? <laughs> oh my! Now, obviously, you didn't have TV when you were young, but you did. You listen to a lot of radio. Yeah, uh, Lone Ranger, and you you sat right there by the by the radio. You're right up against the speaker. Yeah, and you know the fellow who played him on the radio, Brace Beamer, came from Oxford. Right. Yeah, right. he's a. He's a local celebrity around there. Yeah. Now they have a parade every year in his uh, honor. Well, it just started, yeah. <laughs> okay. On a more serious note, what was the worst world disaster that happened in your lifetime? I, I would have to, I mean, uh, the atomic bomb was definitely a bad situation, but I'm not old enough to remember that. But this, this uh, 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 what they call it, tidal wave that the hit tsunami. Japan. Yeah, that hit uh, Japan. I think that would have to be the worst, worst thing that I, I come up with. Yeah, that was terrible, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Uh, uh, everybody, little kids, everything. What was the happiest moment of your life? <laughs> the day I met her. Ah, safe answer. <laughs> Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. We've been talking to Jerry Ingalls today at the Addison Senior Center. Thank you so much for joining us. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard.